What's good, everyone? Coach Damien here, the Shift Method Podcast. Hope everyone's having a wonderful day. This is episode number 35, and it will be out on January 30th, 2023. I don't think I've missed saying that up yet, so hopefully I can keep that streak alive, but I'm sure <laughs> I'll say 2022 at some point in July, and it'll be really weird. But anyway, this is a dope episode because I have on my very first guest way back, I think it's two years now, maybe two and a half. I, th- I think it's almost three. It might be because was yeah, it? Is it twenty? No, you're right because it was 2020. Yeah, wow. So it's almost three. Yeah, but it's been far too long. So this needs to happen, and it's going to keep happening because we have a bunch <laughs> of other cool stuff to talk about for another time. But I got my friend on Elias Figueroa. Uh, before we introduce him, just always a reminder: we got a bunch of stuff going on. Of course, we got merch out that y'all can get. That's always available on the shiftmethod.org slash store. Of course, we got training templates. If you don't have time or the financial resources to hire me full-time one-on-one in person or virtually, you can buy a custom training template based on your goals. We got hypertrophy. We got strength to the squat bench and deadlift. We got general fitness and weight loss. So you got some programs available that can hold you accountable and that are at an affordable rate. And of course, if you do want some more individualized training, I'm down in South Florida in Boca Raton at Johnny O's Gymnasium. And of course, you can work with me one-on-one for some in-person custom training in the online setting. But with that being said, let's have Elias introduce himself. Elias, for those who don't know, for whatever <laughs> reason, can't let the people know who you are and what you do. Absolutely. First of all, thank you, Damien, so much for having me on again. I feel like, yeah, 35 episodes ago, we we launched the first one. I, I, I actually, um, in my client newsletter, uh, the past couple of weeks, I, I linked that video to say, Hey, like everyone look at this video from three years ago. And yes. I, I, it was, oh, I just feel like a, like a little, like a little chicken coming out of the egg. Back then. <laughs> like it was, that was a while ago, but yeah, everyone, um, my name is, uh, Elias Figaro or coach Elias coach fig is some of my students call me. Um, I'm a current graduating master's student, uh, master in exercise science and strength conditioning at the university of South Florida uh, Damien, Damien tricked me into following him back to Florida as well as, uh, Katie. That's right. Um, um, yeah, I'm, um, uh, gosh, I wear a lot of hats currently. I'm all over the place. I, uh, um, I'm a graduate teaching assistant. So I teach courses, um, in exercise nutrition. Um, I teach a lab course to the exercise science juniors. Um, I TA a few classes, um, I own a, a coaching business, um, similar to Damien's. I'm a hundred percent online currently because of my schedule. Um, I work in, uh, the human performance lab, which is a, um, not a research lab. It is a, um, just a, it's, a, we call it a community testing lab where people can come in, pay, and we do, um, RMR testing, uh, VO2 max testing, three site body composition testing, which is really cool. We do an in body for initial hydration. Um, we do skin calipers, you know, to get like a baseline, the good old old fashioned way. And then we do an ultrasound, which is really awesome. Mm-hmm. Seems to be the most accurate, um, but kind of feeds through some of the hydration issues that Embody presents. Right. Um, uh, things like that. Um, and then I actually, this week had my first day um, working in Dr. Beck, Dr. Buckner's um, muscle lab, Very um, cool. which is more the research that I'm interested in resistance training um, and things like that. And um, did I leave out anything? Uh, I used to work for a dog walking app, but don't do that anymore. I used to work for WAG. <laughs> That's very important. I'll be sure to plug them. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was that was a summer, uh, so several summers ago. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, thank you, thank you, very cool. Yeah, absolutely. And as you heard, you know, Elias, especially in these last two years. I mean, before even then, when we knew each other in Purdue, had a wide array of fitness experience, but now he's dived into the research realm, which is really really unique and. We'll have plenty of conversation to have him on. I know he's talked about it on other podcasts, like the Epi Dietitians, talked a little bit about strength and hypertrophy. So there'll be a lot of cool conversations in the future with him because he's got the chance to get into some of that research, kind of how uh, our mutual friend, Katie Hoff, who also went to USF for grad school, had the opportunity to work in. So a lot of really cool things, a lot of really cool resources, very bright, fun guy. So you definitely want to make sure you check out his stuff um, if you're so inclined to do so. But... What we're doing today, kind of like we did last year, for those who have stuck with me, uh, with Brendan Adams, we did kind of a year in review. And I'm hoping this becomes a tradition because it gives us the opportunity as fitness professionals and just 
you know, people trying to live their lives and then hopefully, you know, improve our community and improve just being good people as best as we can to kind of just reflect on like what has gone on and then dream for the future. So I thought Elias would be a good person because we both have had a lot of change in the last year to see kind of where we're at. So I kept a lot of the questions somewhat similar. I think they're really good, like open-ended posing questions. And I have no idea what Elias is going to say on them. I have some, some <laughs> inklings of what he may say, but I like to hear what what's going on in his life and hit kind of his highlights. So we're going to start with reviewing 2022 a little bit. So Elias, you know, just generally speaking, as you look back at the past year, how would you say you've developed as a professional or in general as a person? So it may not have to reflect, you can talk about fitness or you can just talk about like yourself and maybe work you've done on yourself, but what has changed? What has developed over yeah. time? Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> this 20, 2021 as well, but 2022 was a pretty grindstone year. Um, just grad school in general, as you know, I'm preaching to the choir, like grad school in general is a lot, you know, on paper, you're like, oh, this many hours, this many things. And then you multiply that by That's a cap. billion. That's lie. <laughs> um, yeah, I wish I was paid hourly, not by salary, but, you know, I don't make the rules, at least for my teaching job, but I don't make yep. the rules. Um, gosh, I think start, if we, if we talk just about like, not fitness related. If we just talk about psychologically, mm -hmm. I think I've de developed a, a not, I don't want to say an ego, but a, a reassured confidence and mm -hmm. a, and yeah, reassurance and a, a happiness that I really am doing. I'm on a mission. I feel like I'm in the right place doing the things I want to do and what I'm, you know, I have a really big purpose. I think, um, oh, I remember when Damien, you, you and Brendan and Arthur were hiring me for the lead trainer position. You had me develop a PowerPoint and I mm -hmm. made a PowerPoint on the power of purpose. And, um, that just sticks out in my mind because yeah, I just feel like I'm doing the right things. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in a place where I'm, I'm, I'm working through my passion, which is helping other people mm -hmm. through the vehicle of fitness. You know, yes. I am passionate about fitness, but I would think my, I do think my number one passion is developing and helping others grow. Um, cause I love, I, I just, I think that's such an amazing culture to have regardless of what setting you're in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would say one, I just feel really like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing the right thing. I'm on, I'm on a, a right path and it makes me feel really good. And, you know, work doesn't feel, huh, I mean, as a graduate assistant, that <laughs> sometimes the work feels like work, but yeah. you know what I mean? Like it, it feels good to do the work. Um, I think as, as a coach, as a trainer, I've really worked into kind of being more open-minded and worked on my client or my athlete trainer relationships instead of having like i'm the coach you're the athlete mm -hmm. i tell you what to do i've really brought that up as a conversation and saying like I, I i give i give my athletes more autonomy and i notice their adherence go up goes up mm -hmm. i ask them more questions what do you think about this when we make changes um and the, the, the cheese, I might've said this years ago when we did them, that's, that's what it feels weird to say years ago. Yeah. Um, I might've said this in our original podcast, but I, the, the metaphor that I always use is, you know, you're the captain of the ship. You're turning the wheel. I'm just a little parrot on your shoulder, <laughs> just whispering in your ear. You can listen to me or not, but it is up to you. And I think that metaphor is important because as a, as a coach, we are trying to empower people to be autonomous yes you know i th i think it's a stepping stone to hire a coach to hold your hand if that's what you need at first mm -hmm. absolutely go for it but i think it is the coach's responsibility to instill in them I ideas and and tools to one day be autonomous and absolutely whether it's that's continuing coaching with you so i think that's another um thing and then kind of grown i never thought i would say this because i've was never an academic kid until recently, but I've grown into, you know, being a, a scientist, which I didn't ever, yeah, I didn't think that was going to happen. That's but, pretty cool to say, yeah. isn't it? 
Um, it does. And, and, you know, after this program, we'll get into this more, but, you know, another thing I never thought would happen was possibly continuing school after this. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I would say just a lot of grindstone work. Um, you know, it's, it's been a season of life. I've had to put a lot of, you know, social energy, you know, uh, on ice a little bit and just, you know, grind, 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 mm -hmm. but also make sure to, to get out on breaks and things and have fun. But that's amazing, that's, man. It's again, my long winded answer of, of development. <laughs> I love it. I can you? definitely, I can definitely relate to that point. I, you know, there's that, I, I apologize if there's anyone who's like into neuroscience and I'm completely off the ball on this, but they say, you know, as men get around the age of 25, 26, their, their frontal lobe develops their their personality kind of solidifies. And I have definitely noticed within the last year, kind of like you said, with confidence and assurance in who you are and what you do and that you know where your life is going for the most part, I think that part of my, my psyche has crystallized pretty well. Mm -hmm. And so that's been really cool because, you know, I think it's also too just like a pivotal point in your life, right? Where like, I'm I'm out of grad school only a couple of years. You're coming out of grad school in this year. So it's still like a, a big transition period, which mm -hmm. is scary. It's a quarter of your life. So people use the term quarter life crisis where you feel like, <laughs> where am I going? What am I doing? I'm in school for this degree, but is it all going to pan out? And so yeah. I think this time of year can be, or this point in our lives around the age of 25, 26, et cetera, can be a very pivotal point for, for young men and women, of course, too. Um, so I think just some experiences I've had this year and, or this past year rather, um, and just developing as myself as a professional and as a person, I feel really, really like, not that I was ever in recent, like not confident, but you always have like mm -hmm. that little imposter syndrome, you know, it's oh, like, yeah. <laughs> and I still have it. I still, I still yeah. make sure I eat plenty of, of slices of humble pie, you know, cause you don't want to be arrogant, <laughs> but I think I've developed a little bit of swagger and a little bit of like confidence <laughs> that is good for myself That's in good. a good way. That's and good. that, that has come from uh, taking action. Like I always talk about, like doing things that I'm afraid of on a routine basis and, and things that like just push me out of my comfort zone a little bit, trying new things and understanding if they don't work, it's okay. And life goes on. Um, so that's been really cool to like see myself, see my psyche be resilient and see how I can like still go out and, crush life and, and get better mm -hmm. every single day. So that has definitely been something I can relate to for sure on the, on the confidence front, which has been pretty dope. Um, I, other ways I'd kind of develop as a professional. Um, I think you kind of mentioned about with, with clients and, and how you work with them. Right. And so definitely autonomy. One thing that I've kind of shifted on a little bit is kind of my, I guess I could say my mindset on, on clients and goals, so I will say sometimes, you know, and I still lean towards this. I always say you should start like conservative with your clients. You know, you never want to have your kill your client on the first couple of sessions. You never want someone who hasn't been active to go, you know, just crush themselves in the gym and then they're mad at you and they're sore and they get injured and they're like, I don't want to work with that guy ever again. He's mean. Right. 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 But I have realized with experience that individualization is huge. And some people just, mm -hmm. you got to find ways to get them some early wins. And that is how they get bought into the process. And sometimes that means pushing them mm -hmm. kind of hard. Um, of course, in a safe manner, that makes sense for them. But I think I, as a coach, I've always been a little cautious, not that my workouts were easy or not fun by any means, but mm -hmm. always like on the really, really cautious side. And so working with some pretty cool and resilient people, I found out that, yeah, these people like mm -hmm. to really, really be pushed mm -hmm. and that makes them feel empowered. It feels like their money is going towards something that makes sense and they're having right. good results. Um, so that's kind of how I've, I've shifted, I guess, a little bit of my coaching philosophy, but of course it always still boils down to that person specifically, uh, which is, which is definitely important for me to take forward. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Very much agreed. I like the, that you mentioned the imposter syndrome because I, I feel like my entire life I've dealt with that severely. And, and I say severe, <laughs> severely because, you know, I've, I, I was, I've always been, you know, I've, I've always been kind of a, a go-getter and trying to achieve as much as possible. But I think what was really pushing me was that, you know, imposter syndrome or, or, or when I would go into fit into a new role, like when I mm -hmm. became lead trainer, when, when you hired me, I was like, gosh, like now I have to manage 50 trainers or, you know, yep. pro probably the, the biggest one of my life was when I was hired as a graduate teaching assistant here. 
mm-hmm. and they're like, okay, now go and teach five courses <laughs> and you have to create two of them from the ground up. Yeah. Um, and I was like, well, okay. okay uh, I don't even have a master's degree. I just have a bachelor's degree currently. And um, we're not just have one, but, you know, comparatively to creating course uh, college curriculum, you know, you would think someone with, you know, um, several la- layers of experience, a master's degree in, or in a PhD would be doing that. Yeah. Um, and I've kind of thought, and I've was getting down on myself for a little while. I was like, man, I have this imposter syndrome. I'm not confident, but I am confident. Like, then I realized like it, imposter syndrome is a tool. It's not a, a negative trait and I can use yes. that and harness it. I just can't let it, you know, impact my, my emotional day or how I'm doing. And absolutely I'm human and human that's okay. But you know, you're, you're going to, you're going to feel that regardless, you know, this isn't, I, I've kind of gotten over it and I've got more secure in my teaching position. I feel yes. really good and feel really confident in the classroom, but I know in the future I'll, something else will happen and I'll feel that again, but it's just that, that voice saying like, okay, yeah, like keep going, like get better, develop yourself. So absolutely. Yeah, I, really I think, and I want to preface this by saying that, you know, excess anxiety and stress are obviously not a good thing but they are physiological tools for your body for a reason when in a healthy setting. So for example, Elias mentioning the imposter syndrome, how those feelings of inadequacy or humbleness can be leveraged in a positive way if you control it and use tools to mitigate it. I would say definitely, you know, with stress and anxiety, that can be another example where, okay, I'm feeling this way for a certain reason. Why can I investigate that? Can I look inward and, and be introspective about it? And then, okay, how can I, leverage these feelings, these emotions, this physiological input in a positive manner, that's going to help me in my life, in my career, in my fitness, whatever, and hopefully not let it get to the nth degree where it becomes problematic. Um, So I can definitely, definitely relate to that as well, where I'm in general, I'm not an anxious person, but of course, like everyone gets anxious with, with work or with something you're doing. And it's like taking a second to breathe, understanding where this is coming from, or trying your best to understand where it's coming from. And then Mm -hmm. telling yourself, I'm going to go ahead and start doing things anyway, despite these feelings, I'm going to go ahead and make it a positive experience, or at least as positive as I can, given my current situation. Definitely. Definitely. It's funny you say that, Damien, because I feel like most people would meet me and they would think like, I'm the opposite of anxious <laughs> or like, I'm just, because I'm, I'm a super eccentric guy. Like I, yes. and I love to talk. I don't shut up <laughs> for the most part, but yeah, like, and I, I love being super open about this. I, I come from a, a, both my, both sides of my family have, you know, layers of, um, of anxiety and, and different, um, psychological health. And I, mm-hmm. I do deal with that. And, and in, you know, in my, in my formative years, I still think I'm going through, but in, when I was younger, it's, it's definitely hard to control, um, or hard to understand or hard to navigate, but mm-hmm. I've really now found, yeah, just kind of using it as a tool. Like, you know, th- of course there's, there's only so much, you know, gung ho and be positive and, and 100%. Psycholo- psychological acquisition. And, you know, some people, I, I, a huge advocate for therapy and medication if you need it and things like that. But, um, at least for myself, you know, being able to, you know, go to therapy and work through things and, and, and just be mindful that, you know, you are not your anxiety and that's just something that happened that's happening to you. Yes. Um, and you can use that and harness that as a tool, you know. Um, I've had plenty of times in high school, in undergrad, even in, I think, only one time in grad school because it's not really kind of died down. But I've had to just, like, get up, like, stand up in class because like, I just don't like quiet classrooms. Yeah. Um, uh, and I have to go outside or, or yeah, just – but I found, like, to really harness that energy and saying it's some kind of – energy that your body is asking for, whether it be, you know, directly consciously warranted or subconsciously. Um, it's, it's, it's not a bad thing. So not that I'm a, a therapist, but <laughs> as, some, as someone who deals is, with deals yes. with that, it's definitely um, addressing in a fitness setting. Cause I feel like there is a lot of anxiety mm-hmm. and in the fitness setting uh, with, for people that are really fit or not. Yes. Or there, like, doesn't matter. So I like that you say, I think I actually maybe heard you either say this in a post on your story or, or reposted someone saying it, 
but you just said you're not your anxiety. And one thing that I've, mm -hmm. I've learned this year is you are also not your thoughts. Your thoughts mm -hmm. could be a part of you. Um, a lot of times most thoughts are borrowed from someone else who is also borrowed from someone else. So that gets mm -hmm. complicated as well. But all those, like this goes to the confidence piece that Elias and I are talking about all those thoughts that may spark into your head when you're trying something new or you're getting a new job or you're trying a new fitness goal, you're starting out new in a, in a, in a chaotic landscape because you don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. There is a good chance there will be voices that like of self-doubt and of like confusion and of uncertainty. Um, and I think people get so attached to those thoughts because they think that it is them and that is that yeah, those thoughts are yeah. true and that's what they are. Um, mm -hmm. and obviously in the moment, again, being respective or respectful, it is hard in the moment to disagree with those thoughts. Even if, if mm -hmm. like the logical side of your brain knows it's not true, it's very difficult to, to separate those two things, but just constantly trying your best to reassure yourself that this isn't true. And this isn't who I am. This is just something that my brain is producing in the given moment in time. That has also been something that has been very helpful if, and when those moments do pop up for me. Definitely. Definitely. Yes, sir. I just, uh, when you said that, I just had an, in, an intrusive, uh, <laughs> you were just like, I hear voices. <laughs> you just said that. No, I I have them all the time. And the, the, yeah. the, hopefully I don't get flagged for this, but like, you know, you're driving on the highway. It's like, what if I just went, Oh, just, Oh, you know, yeah, I feel like that's the most throughout the day. I feel like that's the most common one that people bring up. They're just yeah. like constantly. I have um, no desire to crash my car, but the thought yeah. just popped up. It, it is what it is, man. And then life yeah. just carries on. <laughs> yeah. And th and that is different because, um, on my um on one side of my family, my family has a a, a history of OCD, which is like diagnosed, mm -hmm. you know, obsessive com uh, comp obsessive compulsive disorder of you know actual like doom and pending and, and intrusive thoughts so yeah. living with a lot of family members um and even some uh, some friends and being able to see that experience it it is very different so i don't want to you know the for the listeners absolutely um to misunderstand um what we're saying and 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 uh you know say oh like you know pull yourself up by your bootstraps not at all because mental, mental health not at all we're we're speaking about the things that, you know, we can attempt to control through, through therapy and through talk and through mm -hmm. you know, mindset. But then of course, you know, that's not a, uh, that's not a one size fits all. And there are absolutely situations and, and, uh, you know, people that deal with things that, you know, go be, go beyond just the, the, the talking through and the motivation and, uh, you know, can find help in other ways and who I've seen get help in other ways, which is amazing. Some of my family members yes. have done incredible things through um, improved versions of, you know, medication and therapy and stuff. But um, yeah. That's no, thank a, you for that caveat. Just that's, to a, clarify, that's an important yeah. caveat. Little asterisk. This is not psychiatric advice. We are not clinical psychologists. We are just doing our thing. <laughs> just two dudes. Yep. I do have one more that I, I really learned this year and I'm not a confrontational person. I'm someone who does not I don't mind confrontation. Like if it, if it needs to be done, I've definitely learned mm -hmm. that, you know, conflict in the short term can lead to peace in the long term. So if, if a conversation or something needs to be had or a discussion needs to be, uh, occur, I'm fine with that. Um, but I think for a little bit, I got into the habit of like every thing that I disagree with needs to be a battle. And so and I don't mean a physical battle. I mean, like, you know, someone disagrees with me online or something and I need to like immediately um, like defend my position or like have an mm -hmm. argument with a family member mm -hmm. or they say something that's off putting. It's like I need to immediately snap at them. And there's a time and a place when like someone steps out of bounds where it's like a discussion needs to be had. What I really learned from, again, not psychologist, whatever, but just like anecdotal experience is that people who want to change or, or have the the resource and the ability to work towards change they will leverage that better. And then some people do not want to change their mind. And there is no, the con, it is not really a conversation that you're having with people. If you get into a, a, a verbal altercation, it's more so they just want to espouse their ideas and have mm -hmm. something aside from themselves to bounce it off of. Um, and it took me a little bit to learn that because I, you know, come from an exercise science background. I'm like, I have the facts, I have the reasoning, I can speak pretty well. And so I'm like, I can outthink and you know out research you into thinking my way um sure, yeah. but of course as we know and as i should know like 
throwing facts at people doesn't really work most of the time. Uh, yeah. and that's why, you know, it's, it's hard to get people to commit to exercise and to commit to changing yeah. their diet and to commit to smoking and drug cessation. Like if, if putting facts and, and logic and, you know, talking worked, we'd have a lot better outcomes with these things. And so when it comes to like arguments, you would always think I should have thought like, huh, this person didn't change their mind despite me presenting X, Y, and Z. And so learning like you have to take into account people's psychological state and where they are and their life experience. And that sometimes they just want to fight and they just want to argue. And no matter what you say, it, it ain't going to change. And so learning to like conserve my emotional currency and energy just to be like, sure, say what you want, dude, because I <laughs> am going to save my resources for myself and for people that is going to be more productive conversations right. than just, you know, go into this, this verbal altercation. Right. Right. Definitely. Yeah. Agreed. I don't know how Hannah does that on social media, man, where she just, she, she's in the freaking pit, bro. Every yeah. day. Yeah. People <laughs> like say, I, I sometimes read those comments and people are just ruthless and that's this, the internet, like, yes, you know, I think honestly, it's a testament to her success, her and Emily's success. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're getting comments like that, you have reached a, and you, you have an outreach that is significant and respectable. Yes. And people are emotional beings. And yes. so a, a lot of, you know, science, evidence-based, research-based things really ruffle a lot of feathers of other people who are mm -hmm. in the industry who have decided that they prefer to make money off misinformation and kind of saying, oh, I have this degree, so trust me, you know, I think I have a a really strong opinion or I think I would call it a philosophy of like, don't trust me because I have X degree or X yes. experience or X certification. I think we, it, these things have given me tools to, I think more accurately and more reliably become clo closer to truth. Yes. But, but don't just blindly, follow me like 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 hannah and emily don't start their certification or certification their podcast saying hey look at my rd yeah <laughs> i listen to what i'm saying yes they talk about you know sources and where things come from and you know the actual science of things um and i think that's incredibly important but yeah they <laughs> they get they get pelted because yeah a lot of people have been unfortunately led astray and then what they have to say yeah it conflicts and then that hurts their feelings and then they have to say something yes really and that goes that goes full circle man because i i think like you said you're not your thoughts you're not your ideas i think when people when you challenge someone's ideas and you get that feeling sometimes when someone just you're like oh what's is that is that me that they're no it they're not mm -hmm. it's not against you obviously if they say like a personal comment like damien you know why your nose so big bro like oh now it's personal but <laughs> if someone disagrees with you in a polite and constructive manner, they're not disagreeing mm -hmm. with you as a person, your existence as a person, they're disagreeing with right. the idea that you propose, but it's very hard to separate those two things because people marry yeah. ideas. They get attached to ideas. Oh yeah. Yeah. Or they identify that. with culture of ideas, you know, hundred percent, hundred percent. You see that a lot in, in research where I I didn't know this until I started grad school with like, and my my mentors have been a part of this where there's like like comments to the to the editor or comments to the I've heard they're um, ruthless. I've and heard they're, they're so rough. Yeah, they're, they're, I think there's definitely private ones that can be can be really really mean, but there's public ones that you can read where it's just it's basically oh. like short little research papers written back and forth, and it's it's like it's it reminds me of like like eighteen like maybe maybe early 18 maybe 1700s like england like like <laughs> wigs like like, yeah, yeah. Little, like like and they're like oh like this and they're kind of going back and forth <laughs> um and some it's it's so strange because just as time goes on you know you have old researchers um and i don't mean old like number of years they've been just in the field for a long time and, and you develop and understand research in such a way you do get you can get it it's easy to get attached to scientific ideas yes. especially when you spent your whole life and then when you have this young buck you know scientist who has you know 
not been in the field for as long, but has maybe had access to new information, new methods, and doesn't have that bias. Yeah. Um, it can be, it can be upsetting. Like I know my met my research mentor, Dr. Buckner, he is, you know, he got his PhD in, in 2018. And um I I I think he's he's brilliant, has a lot of amazing ideas and he and part of which he, he keeps such an open mind and um, is looks for looks for data in in facts, but he's had some comments to the editor and comments to the to mm-hmm. the writer and to the author of back and forth with um, some people kind of blatantly challenging him, or or even even some other professors I know blatantly challenging th- things that don't necessarily come. They're like they don't really have as much evidence to back up what they're saying and mm-hmm. and he's more asking for a conversation and they kind of want to fight or they yeah. kind of want to just bash them in some way and i said that, and i think that's just like super unprofessional i like guess it's, it's not just in the youtube comments or the instagram yeah. comments it's like it's people are people man. level in yeah and it's people are it's people just, it's just sad and so yeah so i'm, I'm always sure. trying to poke holes in what i believe in i think that's the best way to stay confident and humble and not mm-hmm. get married to ideas is mm-hmm. anytime like you know, I have like a couple of like big ideas in fitness and wellness space and that I'm always reflecting on like static stretching. Is there any new research on that? Is that still effective? Are there nuances to that hypertrophy training, this and that. And so I'm always like constantly like steel manning arguments and like trying to poke holes in them as much as possible and mm-hmm. figuring out like what's bullshit. What do I need to sift through? What do I need to burn and get away with versus what is like, nope, still seems like I can still hold on to these ideas for right now. And I'll, I'll check back in, in a future day and time. Agreed. Yeah, man. That, that was a, that was a deep talk right there. I like yeah, that. That's yeah, cool. Yeah, that was good. I think we're. So now I want to kind of shift into some more reflection on moments that you may have had. So you can break this up into, you can have a couple if you want, you know, you can break it up as, as fitness versus non-fitness. So what are some kind of like highlight moments for you in, in 2022 that you can think of? Um, my first, oh, that's a good question. Um, honestly, I think my first one is, um, honestly a moment of, of panic or anxiety, which is, uh, the, the weekend before, basically the day before the academic semester started in the fall, which is mm-hmm. when I was just starting my teaching position. And I was, <laughs> I was like, there's no way that I can do this. <laughs> I was like, there, there's absolutely no way because there was a, there was a kind of a weird situation in the exercise science department um, at USF this, this during COVID and everything with, there was a hiring freeze. So they couldn't hire me the first year I was here. Oh. Um, and then there was a lack of funding and we're also trying to transition to a different college. So money's getting displaced. So where they normally had eight to 11 GAs, uh, last semester they had three. Wow. (laughs) And so, yeah, I was either teaching myself or TAing five different classes and then taking a four credit stats class and then neuromuscular physiology. So I was, it's pretty loaded, loaded up. And (laughs) I, I now look at that moment where, and I was, um, I was uh, on the uh, my my advisor, Dr. Martinez, who's also my um, the the di- lab director the, of the human performance lab that I work in. He has been awesome. He and he would call me, and so he called me that weekend. He's like, "Hey, like," and he gave me this really therapeutic talk. Really, really like when you when you're looking for like an advisor like that. That's that's someone who really cares, you know. Yeah, and he just said, you know, everything's going to be okay. You're, you're going to work into this. And, and I totally did. And That's we even had a, we even had a meeting yesterday planning the lab stuff. And he was like, look, look at you. Like one semester <laughs> ago, you like thought your head was going to explode. And now you're like, you you know, you're cool cat. You're like super confident and doing a great work in the lab and, and everything is great. And I, I, I look back as like that as a testament Yeah, or like, now, basically, whenever I do feel a moment of panic or, or like, oh God, like imposter syndrome, which I like, we just talked about, I'm just mm-hmm. like, every single time that I felt that, every time with without without uh, without error, every yeah. single time, I've gotten to this position where I'm like, yes, I'm good, I'm good, You're good, man. And and I think as humans, we have incredible imaginations, 
So even if you're not actually thinking it, there were parts of my subconscious that were like, and there are demons that are, are going to come out of the sewer gates. And, you know, you know, you're going to have to give like 10 kids CPR on the first day <laughs> and like, just like a billion things, you right, know, like, right. even though I'm not actually thinking those are going to happen subconsciously, mm -hmm. um, you know, the imagination runs wild. So definitely that's a good one. And then I'll do number two and then, and then give the microphone to you was, Coming, coming down finally to um, just a couple of weeks ago or a month ago, coming finally down to South Florida to visit you and Katie and that have fun. that kind of celebration of over three years of, you know, friendship and mentorship and, and, and just development of just celebrating the three of us just like in South Florida, like woo, it's, it's, it's warm. The weather's great. We're eating some awesome food. Um, uh, and three years ago, you know, we were in freezing cold Indiana, uh, um, just had met all of us. And, and so that, that was, that was really special. Um, that was really awesome. That was fun, man. It's, it's one of those surreal moments where I just, I think I kept saying it, but I'm like, dude, we didn't even know each other three years ago. And now look at us and look what we're doing. And we're here all together in the same space, despite being yeah. literally on opposite originally from opposite corners of the country. Katie's from Jersey. Okay. You're from California. I'm from Florida. Yeah. yeah. And then we were just all in the same place. Like, yeah. like we've known each other forever. So that was really dope. It's funny you say that. Cause like, I guess the like non-fitness related thing, if I had to summarize it, it's, I think after like leaving high school and college, it's, I still have friends in the area, but it's, it's harder to interact with friends. And I'm a mm -hmm. very, friendship really invigorates me and makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. And so, I think especially during COVID when I didn't really see many friends, it was very difficult. Mm -hmm. And I never really realized like why I felt stressed at times. And I think mm -hmm. as I started hanging out with friends and like, oh, this feels so good. I feel so amazing. I realized that friendship was definitely something that was like lacking and interacting with my yeah. friends was something that was lacking. Mm -hmm. And so I actually, you know, me and my goal sheets that I always have yeah. over here. Um, I actually have a photo of me, you and Katie when we're up in Tampa. Uh, and so like my, my goal for this year that I have started in 2022 is to make sure I spend more time with friends and, and people I awesome. care about. Awesome. Um, and that can be in a number of ways. It can be something simple as just like hopping on phone calls, texting more and trying to make effort to travel when I can. I got to go to San Diego for a conference, but it was also a good, just like bonding experience with the data driven mm -hmm. strength guys with oh, yeah. one of my good friends, Sean, who's been in the program exercise science for a long time. And so that was just like a fun, like an educational experience mm -hmm. that I was like, and I got to go to California, which was always a dream of mine to, yeah. I've never gone West. And so that was a really cool experience to, yeah. to kind of get out of my own little bubble. <laughs> Um, it made it sound like it's a, like a new frontier. <laughs> it, it was for me, man. It was, it was cool. It was surreal going, you know, it was just, the landscape is, is so different than here. And so it was just, it was beautiful. I, I had a great time in San Diego yeah. and I would definitely go back. Um, I'm have to go to LA, of course. LA. Yeah, Gotta go. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely on the, on the non-fitness side, like spending time with friends, hanging out with you and Katie and, and Brendan, like that's all been, been super, super fun and invigorating for, for myself. Um, favorite fitness moment. I got two. Um, one is kind of obvious. The other one I'll explain. So the first one is I started doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in like September and I've kept at it and I really, really enjoy it. Um, I've, I've mentioned it a couple of times in other podcasts. It, when you first started it, it's one of those things like you want to talk about imposter syndrome, bro. Like mm -hmm. you don't know what the fuck you're doing. And like the best way I can describe it is you're driving a car with controls that are different than a standard vehicle. So like mm -hmm. to accelerate, you have to press random buttons in a certain order to even go forward. <laughs> and so like, you don't know the controls. Um, yeah. You have a GPS in a foreign language and then the signs on the mm -hmm. roads are in another language. <laughs> and so like everything is just like upside down backwards. Yeah. And it's like, it was so literally humbling, literally upside down and backwards. <laughs> but after going for now I'm coming up on four months, it's I'm still like a super, super beginner, but things are starting to make sense and click and it's a really fun discipline. Um, it's a fun cognitive challenge as much as a physical mm -hmm. challenge. And they're really like into like respect and honor. And so they have like that, that whole, like, you know, martial art aspect into it, not just the physical side, which is oh, really yeah. cool. So I'm, I'm really enjoying that. Absolutely. 
Um, yeah, we, we still got to roll together. I mean, if we, yes, dude. Yes. Last time. I know I'm you not, got uh, sick, bro. You I don't do. Uh, <laughs> oh, that was, I felt so terrible. If you no, guys no, have no. seen him. Bro, don't even worry guys, about it, dude. For the listener, um, <laughs> if you guys watch the training vlog that I briefly was in most recently, <laughs> I don't talk very much. And you can kind of, <laughs> my eyes kind of look black. I was like in those moments, I was just feeling this like and I, I never get sick i maybe get sick like once every two years it's like um i was and so when i do get sick i become a huge baby right um uh, <laughs> i was in in during that during that workout i just like felt all of like my white blood cells in my immune system saying like the, the next three days are going to be very difficult <laughs> um, yeah that's why i didn't talk very much but um uh yeah, but no, I not not that I, I don't do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but um, I was a wrestler for most mm-hmm. of uh, elementary school, middle school, and high school, and so there there's elements of that there. Probably what oh, will yeah. end up happening is we'll go back and forth. You'll will probably flip me around, but then you'll end up choking me out because that's the one thing I we don't do is we don't we don't. You're do not allowed finishing. to be on your back, really. That's that's a bad thing in wrestling. I'm not on my back, and then, <laughs> excuse me, and then also yeah, we don't we don't choke out. It's all yep. pinning. Or yes. Point, or points for takedown. So, um, yeah. yeah. We'll get some rolls in though. It'll be fun. <laughs> so that was a fun thing. And then actually, this was a unique experience. I severely injured my ankle last year, back in like April. Uh, I'll be sure to to link that video. Um, and kind of like I detailed like my recovery process. Um, that was, I played basketball recreationally since I was like in elementary school. It's my favorite sport to play. It's still like my favorite physical thing to do um, for various reasons. But to make a long story short, I was just playing, complete accident. I passed the ball in the air. Guy slipped under me a little too far. And my pinky toe side came down and just fully just from like, basically this guy's almost hip height just slammed into the ground. My ankle in the video I have touched the floor. And like, I can, I've been very fortunate. I've like, I've jumped before and landed on a basketball. I've stepped on people's shoes all the time. People step on my shoes. Like I've never had an issue ever, but this one was just really bad, immediately swelled on me. And so I say this is one of my favorite moments because I always preach about like, you know, injury risk or injury modification and how you can still train and how resilient the human body is. Mm -hmm. And this was a time to put my money where my mouth was. And I came out. And so like, I took my time and I used my, you know, my, my psychological skills of, Hey, you know, you have an injury, but it's, it's no factor. You're going to continue to train in ways you can, mm-hmm. you're going to progress over time. You're down, but you're not broken. And mm-hmm. sure enough, over a couple of months, everything got back to normal. Um, despite it being swollen, like a damn balloon half the time, but it, it, it came out very well. And now that I'm on the other side of it, back better than I was before. It's a very reassuring thing to how resilient the human body can be, despite having something that feels in the moment, very catastrophic. So that was a pretty cool, like, like psychological win in the fitness realm. Absolutely. Absolutely. hundred percent. I relate to that very similarly. Oh, I think, Oh, I I only did a non-fitness one. So here's, here's my, I was thinking about this when I was getting dinner last night. I'm like, which, what'll be my fitness one. And technically this is, I think a psychological fitness win is okay. um, Most of my, most or excuse me i also don't mean to interrupt you is that did you no, your that's it yeah, yeah okay, okay, man. um i would say a, a, a great at least in the last year it's been really because i've been doing so much ironically for my own health for my own fitness it's been hard to really like i've basically been like maintaining at a, like a lower speed i haven't been able to push um you know my favorite kind of training is hypertrophy training i haven't been able to push that to you know my heights and i've felt um, just, you know, I, I'm not, in, I wasn't at my, um, highest, you know, my, my mouth swole or whatever you like. To yeah, say. Yeah. And working with that, um, psychologically and again, separating us from our bodies, I think is really important. And I think it, like as fitness pros, it's especially important for us to say, you know, because, that helps anyone that helps someone who is trying to lose a lot of weight for health reasons that helps any, you know, that helps Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, it, yeah. it, it doesn't matter who the person is or what their body looks like. The, the fact that, and it is awesome, you know, fitness is awesome 
aesthetics, if you're interested in them is awesome. Being metabolically healthy is really important and awesome, but to still separate yourself from your body, like I think is really important. And and I think if you, if you're in good shape for a while, you might be able to take that for granted and kind of Mm -hmm. identify with that. So it was a good lesson for me to say like, Hey, like, that's okay. This isn't who I am. And it's interesting because no one treated me any different aside from I wasn't getting like, Hey man, you're looking pretty big right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, that, that, made, that was happening a little less. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, other than that, you know, people were still treating me the same people. I was still having great conversations. I was still making people laugh, which is my favorite thing to do. Um, honestly, probably almost more than fitness coaching is making people laugh. Um, so yeah, I would say a similar, not, not that it was an injury, but it was a, re- it was a psychological re- recovery, not yeah. recovery, but psychological work through of, of something, uh, just like another perspective to take advantage of. I can certainly relate to that because in grad school, I was definitely on like maintenance mode because I was, you know, similar to you. I had the GA position and then full time mm-hmm. and then adapting to the new like culture of, of being in the Midwest. It was very rough the first year. And like, if I went to the gym one or two times in a week, that was a good week. Mm. And like, I would, I'll admit there were workouts where like, I was like, I don't fucking want to be here. Like, I don't want to do this. I want to quit early. There were plenty that I did quit early or cut very short because I, my mind and body just hated, Mm. hated exercise in the moment because I was so like psychologically and emotionally drained. Um, And then just like, coming out of grad school, understanding that your body and mind goes through different phases and like, that is okay. And -hmm. sometimes like when you feel like you want to push, like right now I'm dealing with like a little bit of a little hammy tweak, but no big deal. Going to be fine in a few weeks. Um, Understanding that, Hey, this is where I am right now. I'm going to do what I can. And then when things get better or as I progress, then I can work towards X, Y, Z. And not Mm -hmm. trying your best not to get frustrated that you can't do exactly what you want at this exact point in time. Because sometimes, sometimes life dictates, unfortunately, you know. Agreed. Yeah, man. All right. Well, that's cool. Favorite moments of 2022. Now let's let's spring forward to 2023. We're in right now. Again, this is episode number 35 this is going out at the end of january so we still got 11 months i know when i released brendan's it was really late because i was <laughs> trying to get it out but we're in january still so we're good we're good so elias in general like thinking about yourself personally professionally like with your business like what does kind of the future look like like what are your future fitness goals your future yeah. business goals where do you hope to see yourself as you progress through the year there's a lot of um <laughs> delayed gratification coming to fruition in about four months four months four months from yesterday i'm graduating my program let's go Um, Mm. thank you um and i I was i was having a a meeting actually with an old um teacher he's um uh mike belbus he was my um my lab teacher at purdue um, for exercise physiology, he's about to get his PhD over the summer. And I was I'm getting some PhD advice from him, which kind of segues into my next point. But um, I was getting some PhD from him. And we kind of just talked about like the pursuit of something and delayed gratification and, um, um, you know, just pursuing something bigger than yourself and a bigger goal. And mm-hmm. if, if you can, <laughs> something that will help other people, not just yourself. Yeah. And going into 2023 is going to be a lot of i think personal celebration because finally yeah, I, I graduate i'll have my master's degree um in the beginning of may may 5th through the 8th is when i graduate um i'll have my cscs i'll be also my health coach as well and that's something that's i didn't expect that would happen with my master's degree but has been a really nice surprise is the only academic course I'm enrolled in currently to finish my credits is a health coaching course. And it's not fitness health coaching, it's holistic health coaching. So okay. working on working on motivational interviewing and different tools of how to really talk to a client and get them to be self-starters and giving them tools. And I find elements that I do that just like naturally, I'm sure you do the exact same where you're doing that with a, with a client, but I, have found like, oh, wow, like these, 
these processes and these tools and these and these things are are really powerful when speaking to someone. So I'm yeah. excited about that. And then finally have some time where I can breathe moving back to California for about a year um, uh, where I'll be looking, I'll have probably a look for a, like an in-person job, um, in-person training job um, to fill in parts of my day, but we'll be completely integrating my master's degree into my coaching business, which I'm really excited for um, because I've, I've been able to develop it, but at a much slower pace than I mm -hmm. ideally like, which I'm sure you can relate to at Purdue. And yes. Um, so that, and then something again, kind of with the idea of being a scientist and continuing school and things, something I never thought would happen, which is spending this year also developing um, PhD applications um, for the fall of 2024. Um, I've been speaking to a number of researchers all over the, all over the United States um, and have really really found a lot of you know cool mentors that could be potentially good fits i won't i won't mention any currently um just because i want to again delayed gratification and mm -hmm. everything i want to kind of do do the work first and then you know release some exciting news when it happens but yeah some cool some cool things some about muscle size and strength some about performance some about nutrition kind of figuring that out um and yeah just I feel, I think, and I think I want to go back to all the things we've talked about, just, and I feel an immense feeling of gratitude, being fortunate enough to even be in this situation, Yeah, living in a first world country, having these resources, being able to decide, oh, I want to put myself through grad school, even though I am putting myself through, you know, I'm paying for this degree. I was lucky enough to get it, you know, with the graduate position, some of those resources and benefits, but just yeah having so much gratitude to even be here in the first place yeah you know i didn't i could live in you know 1910 on a skyscraper you know balancing putting up steel <laughs> beams, like you have no like yeah you, yeah i just feel so lucky and fortunate and grateful to be here and have the resources and you know family and friends like yourself to support myself through these things and yeah we just keep on helping people through you know, psychological actualization and research and evidence-based practices and, you know, one, one year program, one year plan. Yeah. Do the applications travel a lot. I'm, I want to travel a lot. Yes. I already got like three or four, <laughs> already got my, my, my rave group back home. We already got like <laughs> two, two or three music festivals on the, on the board already. And I want to travel. My sister's finishing college in Spain right now. She, we oh, saw wow. just last weekend, um, a week ago, we sent her off um, from uh, uh, JFK um, in New York um, to fly to Spain to finish her, um, her, she goes, she went to Wesleyan. She'll be graduating from Wesleyan, but she's finishing her semester in Spain. So I might go visit her, just get some life. Yeah. Replenish. And then <laughs> potentially back in, <laughs> back, back in the academia for another four ish years, but yeah, lots of lots of gratitude, lots of hope, lots of excitement, um, lots of energy replenishing going forward. It's very exciting, man. A lot of life going on this year coming up, man. Yeah. Uh, oh man. Mine are um mine are pretty simple. I'm gonna keep trying to to get as jacked as I can for for what <laughs> that means to me on the, the fitness side, you know, just working out, keep keep training, keep keep enjoying what I do training wise and keep having fun with it and then keep playing basketball and do some jujitsu. Cause I'm really liking those as well. Um, from the business side. And of course I do want to travel. I, that is a very good point. Travel more to see friends. Cause I've been very fortunate that I've had a lot of friends come visit me. I would like to go see them if I had that opportunity because my job is very good with traveling. So hopefully I can come like go visit Brendan and, and go check out you maybe if you're in LA and uh, excuse me, California. So that'd be very, very cool to do. Um, oh, yeah. From the business side, definitely for those who know, I've released these online training models. So definitely leveraging those to try and reach as many people as possible. Because again, I think they're very accessible. They're very user-friendly and they are affordable. So since my time and resources are kind of limit, limited, which I know Elias can relate to right now in his, in his, in his uh, grad program, um, hopefully people can find benefit and value in these things that are that are more accessible 
And this is something that I've always thought about, but now that this main project of the online training models is kind of in autopilot right now, um, the next like big thing I'm going to work on is getting an accredited um, either seminar or like training through ACE, NASM, NASM. Um, the process is a lot, I don't want to say it's easy, but it's it's not what I thought it was. It, it seems like from, from talking to a couple of professionals, uh, it is manageable. I thought like you had to like, you know, have this like have like a gym and a, and a, and a business that has like a large, long standing reputation. Um, as long as you have some of the requirements that they ask you of and you can provide the content and they deem it acceptable and, you know, make sense for what they do, um, they can make you ACE accredited or NASM accredited. So I'm very excited to create a couple of like seminars or online training that I can do hopefully for people. Because again, this is, for those who don't know, the shift method, fitness and education. That's the official title of my business because I think the education side and the coaching side are are one and the same. Um, ultimately, we are educators. We, you know, we educate our clients. We we provide them with how to do things. We provide the the vehicles for them to achieve their goals. But that all comes from education. So having that for not only the general public, but then these these accreditations, hopefully helping young fitness professionals. I find that I really really love the teaching aspect, like teaching an ACE prep course. Um, hopefully I can be like Elias, maybe teach a college course at FAU. That, that is something I'm, I'm talking about possibly the, the, the beginning, the little, little seeds have been planted. And so we're going to, we're going to nourish those as much as possible. Cause I, I do really enjoy teaching young yeah. fitness professionals. Yeah. Um, you're a shoe in too. Oh, no, thank you, bud. I, I appreciate Absolutely. that. Like if I'm doing it, you, you definitely <laughs> should be doing it. You know? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So yeah, just, uh, going to keep trucking along, going to make 2023 the best year yet. And um, that's what we're going to do. And I can't wait for in years, I right, know delayed gratification for you, but I'll hype you up. I can't wait to say, you know, Dr. Fig, Dr. Figueroa. It's got, that's got a smooth ring to it. You know, I appreciate it. Yes, yeah, sir. I appreciate well, it. That feel good. Brother, thank you so much exciting. for, for taking the time to come on. I really appreciate you as always. You, um, it, can you let people know, you know, of course I'll, I'll be sure to put all your stuff down below, but where people can find you or any services or resources you have available at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my Instagram currently in the next, actually when this drops, it'll still be this name, but that name will change. Um, um, when I graduate, but currently my Instagram is coach Elias underscore CPT for certified personal trainer. Um, there on Instagram, I'm, I'll be launching and um, at my website, which you can find at coacheliasfigueroa.com. Um, right now, you when you go to that link, you'll find my landing page. But actually, by January 30th, by January 30th, we should be launched by then. We've had some delayed because of just grad school and things. And the website is now 100% done. Now we're just working with Stripe for some payment options. But yeah, if you go to Coach Elias figureout.com you'll be able to learn about me look check out my services be able to inquire one about um, client inquiries to work with me online for fitness coaching um, and or business inquiries um, to do things like this like podcasting or business partnerships or you know any any ideas you might have um, i have a separate uh, contact uh, form for that um other than that, thank you so much, Damien. I feel excited to bookend uh, episode 35 and episode one and excited to see more episodes with more guests. Yes, sir. And I'll be sure to put all that down below. Again, y'all know where to find me. Uh, we did actually revamp the website in early January. So if you haven't checked that out, it looks a lot sleeker, got some updated services and links to go directly to any resources, whether it's clothing apparel or the programs or for the YouTube channel. It's a lot more accessible and user-friendly on the website now. So be sure to check that out, theshiftmethod.org. Again, those custom training plans are available through the Train Heroic app. The app is free. You just buy the program. It's $80 one-time purchase, and you have access to it for an entire calendar year. It comes with video demonstrations, notes, and videos from yours truly. You get to see me for some accountability week to week. Um, and it's just a progressive program that is is very fun and inclusive for for most commercial gyms that you have available to you um, for four various goals that you have, um, depending on what you want to do. Otherwise, again, if you're in the local area and you want to train with me in person, I always have a couple spots left in the morning time. Um, so you can always click any of those take action buttons to fill out an inquiry form. And as always, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Instagram, we have daily content. And of course, this will be going up. Uh, podcast every other Monday, YouTube video 
every other Monday that isn't those Mondays. So we got plenty of stuff coming out for y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in. Elias, great seeing you again, man. Stay warm you, and have a wonderful day. All right. Thank you, Damien. See you guys. Later, everyone.